Last time Doc spun the random reactions wheel he landed on 1982 and reacted to the message by Grandmaster Flash. When he spun the wheel again it landed on the year 1997. Your suggestions came flooding in. Sometimes we'll go with the most frequently suggested song. Sometimes we have to consider copyright, but then there are times when we just go with whatever the heck we want to from that year. And this, my friends, is one of those. Hailing from Long Beach, California, Sublime was the epitome of 90s ska punk, blending elements of reggae, punk rock, and hip-hop into a unique sonic concoction that captured the spirit of their era. Sublime's self-titled album, often referred to simply as, Sublime, was released on July 30, 1996. It was the band's third studio album and their major label debut. The album was a significant milestone in Sublime's career and played a pivotal role in shaping the ska punk and alternative rock scene of the 1990s. In 1997, the following year, Sublime released one of the album tracks, Santa Rear, as a single. Shall we have a listen? Yeah, that one, one time another used on the Lincoln Highway. So yeah, Santa Rhea, we had already been playing that song. It was recorded as a Lincoln Highway dub on the Robin the Hood album. So we're just kind of stumped and kind of having trouble figuring out um, which arrangement we wanted to work through. I think at one point we just kind of like took a break and wasn't that the time that that uh, we went into the sauna. And set the studio on fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there was like this pony wall, like this half wall on the one side. And, and we're in the, the restroom and Eric just like kind of gets out and he throws his towel over this pony wall, not knowing that there's a sconce lamp on the other side and it catches the towel on fire and we're outside smoking and all of a sudden we're like holy shit well, and it's all untre <laughs> untreated wood so it was really you know flammable place would have gone up like a oh it was right above the deck i remember on santa Rhea particularly there were a couple of overdubs a little bit like a guitar solo and another part but for the most part we had all the trappings of a big thing we had drum techs we had guitar techs so they had all the opportunities to be slow and assembly based but what happened was we would just wait for the right moment. You would wait, and then Bradley would feel it, and off you would go. And Santa Rhea, in my memory, was largely, that was it. You know, wait, stop, wait, wait, pow. And that happened frequently on this project. I don't practice Santa Rhea. I ain't got no crystal ball. is arguably one of Sublime's most iconic tunes, and for good reason. Musically, Santa Rhea is like a breath of fresh air. It's got this irresistible reggae groove courtesy of Bradley Noel's smooth guitar licks, Eric Wilson's funky bass lines, and Bud Gore's tight drumming. It quickly became a staple on alternative rock radio stations and a favorite among fans worldwide. And these visuals, that is, the official music video, pretty damn dope too. Super simple but stylistic, a classic really, in retrospect.
came together in 1988. Eric Wilson and Bud Gaw were in punk bands, informed Sublime after Bradley Noel came back from college, and introduced them to the world of reggae and ska. And the mix of those three styles, punk, reggae, and ska, became the foundation of the band. They played their first show on July 4th, 1988, but struggled to find more people who would book them for shows as an unsigned band. And so they did what every punk band does in that situation. They started their own label, calling it Skunk Records, named after the combination of ska and punk, all so that they could tell clubs that they were Skunk Records recording artists. And for context, back then, the ska punk scene was very, very small. There was Operation Ivy, there was the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, and of course, lots of kind of small regional bands, and the two-tone scene a few years earlier than that. But this was years before the ska punk boom of the mid-90s. And so they focused on playing in Southern California at clubs and house parties that would inevitably get totally packed and out of control. As Eric Wilson described it, we played some pretty rough neighborhoods. You'd have to be afraid for your own safety. Gangster kids would show up at the parties and there would be trouble. Somebody got stabbed one time. And in 1992, they released their debut album, 40 Ounces to Freedom, on their own Skunk Records label. And even with this being their first real album, it was clearly something very special, most notably being the super eclectic variation of styles. For example, effortlessly going between punk in songs like New Thrash. To reggae rock. With a face like Bob Marley and the mouth like a motorbike. And just about anything in between. They also included a lot of hip hop influences and references, which was something very new to the ska punk genre at the time. For example, they have a whole song about the rapper KRS One, as well as references to Public Enemy, Ice Cube, and many others. There's also covers of Bad Religion, The Grateful Dead, and The Melodians, and shout outs to everybody from Crass to Rudimentary Peni to Miles Davis to Frank Zappa. That is how broad their kind of sonic palette of influences was. It's one of those albums that's kind of all over the place, but in a good way. Like these guys were just so full of creativity and ideas that they just couldn't limit themselves. But instead of it being a jumbled mess, as is often the case, it all just kind of works together. <laughs> Santeria is an Afro-Cuban religion, practiced in Cuba, South Florida, and exported to other areas in the Caribbean. This song tells the story of a jealous ex-boyfriend who is planning to take revenge on the man who stole his girlfriend. The man then decides to find a new girlfriend, but expresses his desire to use violence as he describes his plans to pop a cap in Sancho, and stick that barrel straight down Sancho's throat, if he ever sees him again. The lead singer refers to the man as Sancho, and his ex-girlfriend as Hannah. In Chicano culture, a man who steals another man's girlfriend is often referred to as Sancho, while a man's woman or girlfriend is referred to as Hannah, which is adapted from the word reina, meaning queen in Spanish. This music video was a visualization of the story told in the song in the form of a western, and featured Tom Lister Jr. as Sancho. 
Tom Lister was an American character actor and occasional professional wrestler known for his roles as the neighborhood bully Debo in the 1995 film Friday, and as President Lindbergh in The Fifth Element. Lister was bitten by Lou Dog on the lip in a particular scene where he gets too close to Lou Dog's face. But who was Lou Dog? Well, to answer that we must address the elephant in the room. Lou Dog belonged to Sublime's lead singer Bradley Noel, who also appeared in the video. But this was just stock footage of Bradley, because very tragically he died of a heroin overdose just two months before their self-titled album was released. The album was originally titled Killin' It, but for obvious reasons that was changed to the word sublime. As Bradley had entered his 20s and witnessed his band's success, he decided to try heroin. Bradley's father later explained, his excuse for taking the heroin was that he felt like he had to be larger than life. He was leading the band, leading his fans, and he had to put on this persona. He heard a lot of musicians say they were taking heroin to be more creative. But Noel became addicted to heroin, and he told of this battle in several of Sublime songs. Bradley is said by some to have predicted his own death in the song, Pool Shark, with the line, One day I'm gonna lose the war. On the morning of May 25, 1996, Sublime was in the midst of a five-day tour through Northern California that was to be followed by a European and East Coast tour. However, while the band was staying at the Ocean View Motel in San Francisco, drummer Bud Gore awoke to find Noel lying on the floor next to his bed. His Dalmatian, Lou Dog, was curled up on the bed whimpering. Bradley had tried awakening his fellow bandmates to go to the beach with him that morning, but they were too hungover and tired to get out of bed. Initially, Bud assumed that Bradley was too intoxicated to get into bed. However, he noticed a yellow film around his mouth. Bud called for paramedics, but Bradley had died several hours earlier and was pronounced dead at the scene. Bradley was cremated and his ashes were spread over his favorite surfing spot in Surfside, California. The cause of death was listed as a heroin overdose. After Bradley Noel's death, the remaining band members faced legal battles over the rights to the name, Sublime. They eventually settled with Noel's estate and continued performing and recording as, Sublime with Rome, with Rome Ramirez as the new lead vocalist. The new band almost exclusively performed Sublime songs, and went through a number of lineup changes over the years, before finally disbanding this year. And now, in 2024, history has come full circle once more, as the iconic band reunited at Coachella with a special twist. Original lead singer Bradley Noel's son, Jacob, took the mic. This historic performance occurred on Saturday, April 13, 2024, at Coachella's main stage around 6.05 p.m. local time. The trio delivered an electrifying set featuring Sublime's greatest hits like, Santa Rear, Wrong Way, Garden Grove, What I Got, and, Do In Time. Jakob Noel's participation in this reunion was deeply meaningful. He played his late father's signature guitar, stepping into a custodial role to honor Bradley Noel's legacy. Jakob expressed his desire to fulfill what his father never had the chance to experience, performing those beloved songs in front of a massive audience at Coachella. This Coachella reunion marked the first time Sublime performed with Jakob, and it was a poignant moment for fans and the band alike. If you're interested in catching more of Sublime, they'll be playing several festival shows this year, including Pomona, California's No Values Fest and Ocean City, Maryland's Ocean's Calling. Keep an eye out for their upcoming performances and let me know what you think in the comments. Peace out. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. I need to spin the wheel again. Sir Doc would have been cross, and I am due a good spanking. Hopefully I'll get it, now that I have remembered. Okay, well the next year is. 1979. Get in the comments and let us know what you'd like us to react to.